In our previous tutorials, we have used variables to store values in our programs. Each of these variables refer to a single memory location to which we can assign a value. Sometimes, however, we will want to store a group of values for use in a program, such as, for example, a group of 10 integer values. Rather than storing these values in separate variables with different names, we can make use of a structure called an array. We use an array to store a group of values, all of the same data type and with the same name. In this lesson, we will look at how to declare an array, store values in it, and access these values. And before we look at a sample program which uses an array, let's look briefly at how to work with them. We'll begin with a definition of an array and some terms associated with arrays. An array consists of a group of successive or contiguous memory locations, all of which are the same data type and which have the same name. We can think of an array then as a group of variables, each of which has the same name and the same type. Each variable in the array is called an element. And the way we distinguish between these elements of the array is by giving each one a unique index or subscript. So for example, if we store 10 integers in an array called num, and notice that we have a set of brackets at the end of the name of the array, this distinguishes it from an ordinary variable name. The 10 elements in the array num will be referred to as num0, num1, num2, up to num9. The final element in the array has an index value of 9. And we say then that the upper bound of the array is 9. Now let's look at how to declare an array. As we have seen in earlier examples, to declare a variable, we state the name of the variable and the type of data to be stored in it. We do the same for an array, but we also specify the upper bound. So, to declare the, the array num to hold 10 integers, we would write dim num9 as integer. So we have included the upper bound of 9 in the brackets after the array name. And the result of this is to set aside 10 memory locations called num0, num1, up to num9, each containing 0, which is the default value when we declare an integer. To access an element of an array, we simply specify the name of the array and the index of the element. And we use this as we would any other variable. For example, suppose we want to store the value 5 in the element whose index is 3. We would write num3 equals 5. And when this line is executed, the value 5 will be stored in num3. And the array will now look like the following. So let's recap briefly. An array consists of a group of variables of the same type and having the same name. We distinguish between the elements of the array by giving each a unique index number or subscript. And the index of the last element of the array is called the upper bound of the array. In our sample program, we use an array called num to hold five integer values. We display these values and then calculate and display the average. Although this is a relatively small example of an array, the same principles will apply when dealing with larger examples.
On our form, we will use a button and a list box. When the button is clicked, the five integer values will be displayed, as well as their average. Now let's write the program. We begin by declaring our array num, which will contain five integers, and so will have elements numbered 0 to 4. And we write dim num 4 as integer, with 4 being the upper bound in this case. When this line is executed, the array will contain five elements, num 0 to num 4, each containing the value 0. Now we'll store values in the individual elements as follows. We're storing the value 6 in num0 and the value 3 in num1 and so on. Alternatively, we could have declared and assigned the values to our, our array in a single statement like this. I've put a comment symbol at the beginning of this line as Visual Basic will not allow us to declare the same array a second time. So we can only use one of the methods. In this line, we don't specify the upper bound. Instead, Visual Basic will determine the size of the array based on the number of values in the brackets. And it will assign the values to the elements in the order in which they appear. So 6 will be assigned to num0, 3 to num1, and so on. Now let's write some code to display the values in the array. To do this, we simply display the contents of each element. When we look at these lines of code, though, we can see that they involve a lot of repetition. And this should suggest that we can use a loop to achieve the same result. A for next loop would be the most appropriate, as we know that we will have to execute it five times. Here's the for next loop, which will achieve the same outcome. In this case, we loop through the values of the index using some variable, which we've called i, which runs from 0 to 4. And we display the element with that index each time. The advantage of using a loop is that if we had 100 integers stored in the array, we could simply change our loop to run from i equals 0 to 99. Finally, let's calculate the average of the values in the array and display it in our list box. First of all, we will declare two variables, total and average. Total will be an integer, but average may include decimal values, so we can declare it as a single or a double. And we'll assign an initial value of zero to both variables. In the next line, total is simply the sum of the elements of the array, i.e. num0 plus num1 up to num4. Average, then, will be total divided by 5. And finally, we display average in the list box. Once again, though, we could use a loop to achieve the same result. Let's have a look at the code for this loop. In this case, then, we are going to use a loop to calculate the total, rather than calculating it on a single line, as we did above. We loop through the values of the index, going from 0 to 4, and each time we add the value in the element with that index to our total. On the first run through the loop, we add num0, and next we add num1, and so on. And finally, we calculate the average as before by dividing by 5. In this case, we are using more lines of code than earlier. 
but if there were say a hundred integers the loop would be much more manageable than using a single line of code to add the contents of all 100 elements of the array from num0 to num99. Finally, let's run our program and check that it's doing what we wanted. And when we click the button, the values and their average are displayed as intended. In this lesson, we've seen how to declare an array, store values in that array, and to work with these values using a loop. In our next lesson, we will look at some further aspects of arrays.